Team Awesome is back. That's right, everybody. It is Tangle Talk with Team Awesome. We are back once more. I'm very excited for this episode because this is our first episode that is not directly after an episode. So we're actually freestyling it this time, and that's kind of <laughs> exciting. Um, this, is also first, this is also the first episode where we've gotten a lot of viewer suggestions. So get ready to hear the stuff you wanted to hear us talk about. The theme thank you, of, people. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We appreciate it. The theme for today's episode is fandom theories, old and new. We're going to go over some of the old stuff from way back in the day before there ever was a series. We're going to, of course, talk about the new stuff that's currently out. Um, and we're just going to have a lot of fun with it. Trust us, not everything that we say today is going to make a lot of sense. Some of it's just going to be wild and crazy, and I won't say pointless, but it will definitely be wild and crazy. <laughs> and mine's probably yep. going to be a little pointless. But <laughs> <laughs> we can also look back on this and see if we were super right or yep. terribly, wrong. horribly wrong. Yep, yep, yep. I was just um, saying that. I was like, I can't wait to see at the end of this what we got right and how close we were and, and what we were like completely off about. Because well, it's going to happen. That's actually one yeah. of the fun things is because I have gone through my list of things I want because I've got the tag things I want. Mm -hmm. And I will sometimes go through the old stuff. I'm like, I got that. I got that. I got that. <laughs> I didn't get that, but that's okay. Yeah. I got that. So it's like, it's really cool to see that the crew actually has hit upon a lot of the things that we have wanted as a fandom the entire time. It's just like, mm -hmm. no, here's yeah. little other things we've been really, really wanting to see. Before we get started, though, um, we have received news that the hiatus is going to last through October. We do not yet know when the series is resuming. Um, sorry about that, guys. But, yep, so we're going to keep going on our alternate week schedules all the way through October. And just so you guys know, um, I'm going to be up in Seattle where um, Ellie is for part of October. So Whee! just like she and Kelsey got to hang out <laughs> This month? Yes, this is still it September. Like last week? This month. The week before? I don't remember. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's like Kelsey and Ellie got to hang out. Ellie and I are going to get to hang out, and it's going to be really cool. This is actually going to be my first trip to Seattle since I was a little girl, and this is going to be my first ever solo airplane flight. Like, Ooh, I've so never... what you're saying is it's your first trip to Seattle since I've been alive. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> The last time I was in Seattle, I was six. So you were not alive yet. <laughs> Seattle's yeah, so great. I, I loved like... it. So that was 22 years ago. So, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. No, that was 32 years ago. I can math. I promise. I really am. <laughs> my 20s, even though I feel like it. Okay. I was like negative 12. <laughs> negative 12. 12. Yep. I would like to say that Tangled wasn't even like a gleam in Disney's eye, but that's not true. They've had thinking about Rapunzel for ages. Yeah, yeah, nineteen forties. Yeah, I would say Walt was like the first person to think of Rapunzel. So yeah, sorry, it was worth they the wait. That. I think I like to think it was DVD. worth the wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so getting onto theories, we're going to start on our three, our personal individual top theories that are running through our heads these days. And I'm going to head this off with um, two different theories about Jean Thierry. And I want to thank, um, have you heard of that hair show, whose name I wrote down this time so I would get it right. Um, I want to thank Beth for kicking around the ideas with me and for also feeding me ideas in the first place to kick around so that I can present these theories to you. But these are not 100% unique, unique to me. But yeah, here we go. Okay, so the first theory with Jean Thierry. So... The sun is obviously the flower on Rapunzel, and the moon are the rocks and possibly another living person. And I think that the comet is the opal and Jantiri. So the way that this mythos appears to be working is that the sun and the moon need to work together to stop or destroy the opal, which is why the rocks went looking for the sun drop in the first place, because the rocks have the power to hold the opal back and keep it from, keep people they can hold the opal back and keep people from the opal, but the sun drop itself is a thing that can destroy it outright. John Thierry used the comet and the opal with the opal embedded inside himself as a source of power, because we all know he was like this powerful sorcerer um, that he could cause terrible snowstorms, as we both, as we all saw in the series. Um, for example, I'd like to point out that comets are made of ice, so that kind of ties that in there. And apparently, he was as big as a mountain 
which might have just been Xavier's storytelling style, but the visuals deeply implied that he was literally the size of a mountain. Mm -hmm. Um, More on that later. Um, But if he is the comet, what better to melt the ice of a comet than the actual sun? And when you look at the moon's job when it comes to the Earth, and I don't mean in a mythological sense, I mean in a scientific sense, the moon is often referred to as the Earth's guardian, that using its own gravitational pull, it keeps things like meteors and even comets from colliding with the planet just by existing. So that shows that the moon is the protector, but the sun has all the power. Um, So Jean Thierry attacked Corona with the storm because the cold kills plant life. And so knowing that the sun drop was in, in or near Corona, he wanted to destroy it before it could destroy him. So Demanitus was the only one able to contain Jean Thierry using a combination of magic and alchemy and as an aside on that i know i've said it multiple times but i'm going to say it again because we are throwing around theories right now ever since i first heard that demanditus used a combination of magic and alchemy i have said that rapunzel and varian are going to have to team up by the Mm -hmm. end of the series to defeat the great big bad whatever it is and the farther along the series goes and the more i think about it the more i speculate that it's going to be john terry that they're going to be fighting at the end of the series um and that means we get a Varian Redemption arc. Exactly. Fantastic. I absolutely, absolutely think we're going to get a Varian Redemption arc one way or another because I fully believe they have to work together in order to, to, to end whatever's going to be ended. Yeah. But the combination of magic and alchemy cannot destroy the opal because De- uh, Demantis is not the sun drop. So um, a couple last week at some point, Ben Balistrieri, he published a bunch of Adira concept art. And it was really cool, but in multiple places, he mentioned the Brotherhood mm-hmm. in quotation marks in the concept art, and he was referencing the, the Mark of the Comet. Um, so this theory says that Demanet has formed, that the, formed the Brotherhood or, in order to A, protect people from the opal, and B, to protect the opal from the disciples of Gentiri, who would use it to bring him back if they possibly could. So I don't think that there was that that portal that Sugaracha opened. I don't think that was the only way to get Jean Thierry back. Got but it. using that, I think that the portal that Sugaracha opened, I think she specifically set up near Corona. I mean, that she called that tree an idol. So clearly that tree had something to do with um, Jean Thierry in the first place. But... It didn't seem like it was particularly close to Corona, like within the borders maybe, but kind of mm-hmm. on the outskirts after all, like Eugene and Cassandra had to really hoof on a horseback to get there in time, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that the reason why she went after citizens of Corona was because she needed the sun drop specifically because she actually used the phrase that by completing this idol five times over, you will pledge your allegiance to Jean Thierry. So if she got the sun drop to pledge her allegiance to Jean Thierry, that would make the sun drop no longer a threat to Jean Thierry. So got it. that's why I think that's all about. Um, it's also possible that Jean Thierry was the original king of the Dark Kingdom and the Manitous overthrew him in order to put an end to his destructive power. So, I like that one. So, I mean, I think I, I, there's a whole bunch of stuff going, because here's the thing is that we don't know. We, all we've seen is on Thierry so far is this monstrous shadow form. Yeah. But he was a sorcerer, so has he always been a monstrous shadow form? Mm-hmm. Or is that like his sorcerer form? Or is that like what his soul looks like after he was destroyed, but not like destroyed, destroyed, just like bodily destroyed? So, I mean, there's a lot of questions left going with this guy, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing more about him. I'm really excited that his image showed up in Keeper of the Spire because that's what started getting me going that he's going to mean something again because it didn't seem like it was a throwaway, oh hey look, they focused on it so hard that I felt like they were trying to get us to remember that Jean Thierry exists Mm -hmm. because if we remember this then it won't be a shock when he shows up again we'll be like, who's this guy, where'd he come from, you know and he's come Um, up multiple times already like I just, I feel like they wouldn't have done that if he wasn't going to have some sort of significance as we went on yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and Chris has said that they do everything for a reason. And I know that um, through talking to various crew members that Shane was originally saying that every single thing that happened was going to tie back to something else significantly somehow by the mm-hmm. end of it. Like we'd be able to go back and look back and see all the little threads. And so I think that by continually bringing up John Thierry either by name or by image, then 
that's going to cause the audience to just remember that he exists, that he's a threat, that this is a big thing. Because, I mean, honestly, a great big demon dude who can cause snowstorms is, like, nothing to be trifled with, you know? Yeah. And there's no way he had... There's disciples, a plural of jean Piri. There's no way that Sugrach is the only one who got away, you mm-hmm. know? So... Yeah, I'm all I'm all jazzed about that. So the second theory with Jean Thierry is that he is literally the comet or was writing it as some sort of like a magical alien life form that came into the planet via the comet. Um, this one I really like. This is Beth's um, observation and I'm totally behind it. When you look at the external shape of the castle in the Dark Kingdom, it's very similar to the shape of Jean Thierry, his shoulder to body ratio. Like, mm-hmm. the really broad shoulders and then this skinny, narrow little body. Um, the castle is it appears to be in, like, natural rock formation, but carved out of the rock as opposed to built there, you know? Mm. So it doesn't look like it was erected. It looks like it was carved out of a location. And when you look at the way that the light-colored rocks are splayed out it almost looks like an impact crater like a splash guard sort Mm -hmm. of thing and when you look at the black rocks the black rocks are pointing both inward and outward which looks defensive in both keep this in and keep people out so it's the exact same thing about the rocks are trying to isolate the opal um so going with this, this goes back to jean thierry being literally the size of a mountain because if his body could form a crater that was like big enough to carve a castle out of then he was one gigantic dude you yeah. know so i really like that aspect um and when you look at the story that xavier was telling he seemed to be fused to the ground and pulling his power up through the ground mm-hmm. and also if he had the opal inside himself um when his body was destroyed and the opal was left behind kind of like as his soul that would be I mean, we've seen that nobody can touch the opal. Like, you get near it, it blasts you back. So Mm -hmm. they would literally have to build this castle around the opal and not move the opal into the castle because moving it in is impossible. Yeah. And so if... So when you look around the castle, the the mark of the comet is everywhere. It's, like, embedded in the floor, and, like, everybody who lives there is, like, wearing it and has it tattooed on their hand. And so this says to me that the Brotherhood literally formed to keep the opal safe from people and keep people safe from the opal. Mm -hmm. And it seems at this point, I mean, obviously they're going to like reduce the number of people who are walking around because there are some canon like Corona Castle staff members, but it's not like we see the number of staff members that would actually be in a castle. Mm -hmm. And when you go back in that that flashback we saw, there was literally only three people. So Edmund, Mm -hmm. Kieran, and Hera are like all that's left of the Brotherhood, and they're the only ones guarding the Opal now. And I know that a lot of people have speculated, like, is Edmund dead? That thing fell on him. He didn't look like he was in great shape. No, I think Edmund's alive. I absolutely 100% think Edmund's alive. I don't think they would have made such a huge deal of having... Bruce Campbell in the show if he was in it for two minutes and that was it. Yeah, that's no. true. I, I mean, up. unless unless he's like friends with somebody, <laughs> he cannot he cannot be a cheap person to hire. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the funny thing. I've read Bruce's autobiography and he's so laid back and easygoing and he acknowledges his role as like a B-movie actor. So it's <laughs> not like he's A-list top years. Not I'm like not, they're... Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like I, I think it would be kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean, but I'm I mean, but they made such a big deal out of Bruce Campbell being in the show. I'm like, there's no way that's all we've seen of Edmund. They wouldn't have given him such a unique, recognizable design. They wouldn't have focused on his face nearly so much if in the, that was uh, all we're seeing, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in the in the description for season yeah. two. Bizarrely yeah. charming. We have not seen that yet. Exactly. That's true. Not he not wasn't very bizarrely charming, charming there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, we obviously haven't seen any of him because the description of him, that hasn't fit the personality we've seen so far. So we yeah. know we haven't seen the last of him. And I sincerely doubt that we're just going to see more flashbacks. I absolutely yeah. think that they're going to show up at the Dark Kingdom and he's going to be the only person there. And he's just sitting on the his... throne. He's like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Come on in! in. <laughs> so... Um, but also all of this, 
all of this brings to mind the idea that the sun drop and the moon drop fell because the comet landed. Because I've been doing a lot of thinking about, like, so when exactly did the comet show up? I think that they were a reaction to the comet landing. And so they immediately, as soon as the comet hit and John Terry pops out, the sun and the moon were like, we got to counter this the only way that we can. Time to drop some liquid us on the, on the earth. And <laughs> so the opals with him is giving him his power. And so when Demanus has banished him, the opals left behind and the rocks were able to form the cage around it and keep people from getting too close to, to so much raw power again. Kind of like the infinity stones, I guess. Cause it's like, he looked at the guardians of the galaxy and like, when Quinn grabs the Infinity Stone, he wouldn't have made it without everybody else. So I don't know. Maybe they need to make like a chain of love and, and several people <laughs> can handle it at the same time. I don't know. Yes. But um, but yeah, so the Opal actively repels people, which goes back to the whole thing about there's no way that they could have moved it into the castle. They would have had to build the fortress around it. So those are my Jean Thierry things that I've been kicking around so far. And I'm really enjoying this. And I can't wait to see where this is going with him because it's like, oh, there's that thing that was like casually mentioned in the mid-season of season one that I'm suddenly thinking is going to be a much, much bigger deal. So I yeah, never I even like, I never considered it. Like I didn't even think about it until you guys started posting about it. And then you and I started our thread that we've got going on. And I'm like, man, you know what? <laughs> I kind of wrote him off and I think he's going to come back. <laughs> Yeah, so now absolutely. I'm like, Zontiri, ride or die. I'm like, let's go. Bring it I, back. Yeah, I'm totally <laughs> right with you. I'm like, let him get big bad. Let him finish off season three. And they yes. have to, like, defeat him. And then, like, I don't know, somehow somebody cuts Rapunzel's hair. And I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Maybe he cuts her, his, her black. Maybe yeah. he cuts her hair. There we go. I hope not. Because that would, like, okay, all the stuff that I've been saying about Rapunzel getting her hair cut again, that would piss me off if the villain cut her hair. All I'd right. be like... Oh hell no! <laughs> we all know who's gonna cut her hair. It's it's Eugene. If oh. it's anyone other than Eugene, I have some words. If it's anyone other than Eugene, it better be her. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. If she does yeah. it, I'm good. She can <laughs> well, cut I just her meant, hair, but I'd much yeah. rather my, my honest to God, my hope on that is so hard that she tells Eugene, "Okay, cut my hair," because yeah. then. It will still be his significant haircut, but it will be her decision. And that's what I really, really want. I would yeah. not be able to handle that. <laughs> like, oh, that would be too cute. Oh. <sighs> okay, so, Ellie. Yes. Dark Prince Eugene, go. <laughs> yes. Uh, the tinfoil hat is not on as much anymore t at this current time. Not because I believe it any less, but just because there hasn't really been anything. Uh <laughs> But it's always there. It's always with me. Like all the other things uh, constantly swirling in my mind. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, there's not a ton to talk about with Dark Prince Eugene. I think everybody... I mean, I've, I've blabbed about it enough here that I think everybody knows about it. Uh, I would like to thank all of my followers on that blog. We're at 141 now, which is fantastic. Never thought it would be so popular. Yes. So thank you guys. Uh, and I also wanted to do a special shout out to the people who have drawn me beautiful fan art. Uh, <laughs> Dimitri Anya did the first piece, which is still my phone background. Uh, she scribbles for smiles, has the um, Dark Kingdom AU where, or the, it's the Rival Kingdoms AU. Yes. Uh, oh, where, one. Yeah. Where Eugene's the Dark Prince, and he and yeah. Rapunzel have kind of a Romeo and Juliet thing going on. It's I it's like that amazing. <laughs> yep, <laughs> variants included. He's a he's Eugene's like knight. But the thing I love about that is that like the development of it is that it's not like Varian and Eugene are buddy buddy yet. It's like Varian's still like, oh my god, you are the most conceited guy I have ever met. Yeah. And, so it's like, and you know Team Awesome is going to build up kind of the same way that like Rapunzel and Cassandra were not like bestest best friends at the beginning of the series. Yeah. But like, so you know it'll get there. And I just I love I'm loving watching the development and every time the art pops up, I'm like, yay, there's more of this. Yes. I love that. And then there's the wonderful glow amber. I love you, Friday. You're the best. Uh with her 
Dark Princess Cassandra and the Dark Twins AU, which is also fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yes, it is. And just so all you DPE fans know, uh, we are in solidarity with Dark Princess Cassandra. There will be no (laughs) infighting. We are friends. We are in solidarity until we figure out which one is correct. (laughs) And And even then we'll be be in solidarity and just be like, oh. Oh, Absolutely. my condolences. Yes. We will, <laughs> my we will condolences. Send, we will send condolence flowers and chocolates and give hugs and cheer each other on. Uh, and then Night Sky Wanderer has done like, I don't know, five pieces, I feel like, of Dark Prince Eugene fan art, which is blowing my mind. And they're all fantastic. And I love them. And then uh, Royal Seal did a really pretty picture as well. So thank you all for that amazing fan art. And then uh, Mazda321 did a fantastic drabble about Eugene finding out he's the Dark Prince, which was so good. And I really love it. So Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, it's really good. good. I just wanted to give a shout out to all, all the other DPE followers out there. I love you all. And yes. Now I'm done. Yay! Okay. So, <laughs> oh, this God. next theory, I absolutely love this theory because it's <laughs> such a crack theory. And like, yes! I know we've talked about it before, and we like, okay, episodes come and gone, it didn't happen, but I guess, like, Kelsey's ride or die, so go, Kelsey, <laughs> tell us about your theory. Oh, my God. So, I don't have any, like, like set in stone theories, you know, well thought out, well researched. I like to throw out anything that counters Ellie's theories today i think i said rapunzel was the dark prince i said that to neil i said hear me out (laughs) he goes shut up (laughs) i think i said zontiri is the dark prince you suggested that zontiri is the dark prince yeah oh yes (laughs) so here's my thing i don't like to be wrong if i accuse everybody of being the dark prince my statistically i'm gonna be right somewhere yeah so (laughs) fair everyone's the dark prince ariana's the dark prince we all know that Willow's the Dark Prince. I said that one today. I was like, Willow. He's, and Neil was like, please stop. <laughs> no. Oh my but God. I don't have anything like specific. But like the one thing that has stuck with me is that I think that Varian is going to get out of prison because he's going to turn into a bird. And I said today to Bex, I said, I still believe it. I said, you look, you look back at these episodes this season and there's birds flying in the background. That's Varian. Yep. He's watching. <laughs> he's there. He's watching. Every he's time. plotting. He can't do much with wings, but he's working on a plan. He got a little discombobulated uh, when they got lost in the storm, but he's he's perched. He's watching, and uh, damn it, he's waiting. Then yeah. I'm guessing he's got like a mass amount of tea and a huge basket of eggs, so that he never turns completely bird brain. <laughs> it's just an endless cycle. <laughs> Look Everyone like back him. in Corona is a bird. No, we know that's not true. So that's Oh, okay. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Very is a little hummingbird. And so now we have the bird and the raccoon and it's Pocahontas all over again. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> oh. I love it. So I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with this theory until the, the final credits roll, because you never know. I mean, we saw him in a dream sequence. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean he's not a bird yet. She doesn't know. <laughs> but like I just I don't have any like set theories that I came up with like I said I I now support Dark Prince Eugene I didn't at first but that's just because I didn't want to believe that he was royalty but now I'm I'm on board with it I'm ride or die for Dark Prince and now I'm like ride or die for Zontiri so yeah. See, because I never thing. thought about it I was like here's you know what you might be right ideas. and that's the thing is that as soon as I start thinking about it, it's kind of if you can give me a theory that is well thought out and backed up yep. then I will start considering your theory you know it's like yeah. I don't like to get really 100% behind anything mm-hmm. because even the stuff I come up with I don't want to be 100% behind because like you said I don't like to be wrong yeah but you I don't want like to be let down yeah but I do like to throw the theories out there and be like, hey, speculatively speaking, what if this is the case? And yeah. so, like, yeah. So, I mean, I'm with you on that. Like, I'm pretty sold on Dark Prince Eugene. I'm pretty sold on John Thierry. So, it's like, if these things don't happen, I've got that teeny tiny bubble of doubt. Mm-hmm. But yeah. and if like, they I do happen, 
I won't be at all surprised. I can see Dark Prince Eugene, and I can see Dark Princess Eugene, but I can't see the sibling <laughs> thing. Like, that's the one theory I Kelsey just can't get behind. I just, I don't want oh, them to be mean. siblings. It's so, like, cliche, and I just, ugh, yeah. I don't want them to be siblings. <laughs> Well, part of my thing with that, and I have to agree with you, and one of my biggest things with that is largely I don't want that to be the case because part of what Tangled is all about is finding your family. Mm -hmm. And that includes finding people who are not blood relatives but who are your family. Mm -hmm. And so having Eugene and Cassandra have a sibling-like relationship without actually being siblings is really important. Mm -hmm. Having Rapunzel and Cassandra have a sibling-like relationship is really important. And so I'm really into the idea of Cassandra not being related to Eugene by blood. I think it kind of cheapens them being orphaned. If like, oh, and by the way, this person you couldn't stand at first is actually your actual sibling. I'm like, nah, nah, let's not go with that. No. Yeah. And it's so just like typical. Like I just, yeah. Yeah. Another really important uh, family relation that's not actually related is uh, Lance and Eugene. They are brothers. Yes. They're not blood-related brothers, but they're brothers. They're absolutely brothers. And no one can take that away from them. They're brothers. They're not over Eugene straight up telling him he loves him. That was amazing. I'm not over that. That was so great. So, yeah, those two are, like, legit brothers, and it's awesome. It's good friendships. Not everybody has to be related and doesn't have to exactly. have this, like, big surprise, like, oh, we're related this entire time. No, let Tangled. them be friends. Let's have good Tangled friends. Is, Tangled is not once upon a time. Everyone yeah. is not like everyone else. Okay, yep. so now we're going to move on to old series, and these are the theories that existed before the series was ever even announced. This is the kind of stuff that the fans threw out there, that we had these ideas, and a lot of the fans jumped on them and stuck with them because we had had no content, so we're like, nobody's going to tell us no. It was back in the old days when we were all a little crazy. I remember (laughs) back in 2011. (laughs) (laughs) So... A lot of the, a big one was Eugene's backstory. We have all been, you know, fantasizing about Eugene's backstory for eight years. So what happened with poor orphan Eugene? What's going on? When I, I have to say, when I used to watch the movie, after a while, like after I had been on Tumblr, every time he would get to that part, he'd be like, you don't want to hear about my backstory. I'm like, Yes, I do. You're, like, shaking the TV. You're, like, tell me! (laughs) I'm, like, you... You fess up, Fitzherbert. (laughs) I I don't care if your backstory is sad. I want to know about it. (laughs) Well, and then there's the part in the beginning of... uh, Is it... At the first movie, or before ever after, when he's, like, I grew up as an orphan on the rough street, and she stops him, and I'm, like, no! (laughs) Let him talk! Uh, Rapunzel, let him talk. <laughs> I don't care if he's sidetracked on a tangent. <laughs> let him get so Let him tangent forever. Eventually, we'll get to learn some dirt. <laughs> well, like I said, I really, I really feel like that's coming up. That might oh, yeah. be mid-season. I feel like we're gonna learn that really soon. Okay, so the fandom theory back in the day was actually very largely based on his name, because Eugene means noble born. And Fitzherbert means son of Herbert. Mm -hmm. So everybody's like, noble-born son of Herbert. So obviously his father was like a lord or a baron named Herbert. And there was this whole, you know, illegitimate child thing going on. And that's why he was sent to an orphanage because his mother was poor and his dad shouldn't have had him. And so he was sent away. And he's actually a lord or something. And so that is why, personally... When the Dark Prince Eugene theory first popped up, I went, that kind of, like, throws back to that theory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, I'm a lot of what made me like the theory in general was that it was like, oh, but if it's right, then that's canonizing a fan theory. Yeah. And, Plus, I mean, not necessarily... It's also, uh, it canonizes old stuff, because yeah. in the way, way back... back. In Way the back. original, like, oh, God, what was it called? Rapunzel Unbraided, Unbraided I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. It yes. was like a semi-sequel to Enchanted, but instead of going from the real world, or no, from the fantasy world to the real world, it was the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> and so 
And so Claire it was, and Vince it, yeah, Claire are like Vince. two kids. They're not kids, but they're young people, and they get transported to the world of Rapunzel. And Claire becomes the princess, and Vince becomes the prince. And to then be fair, the actual... Claire becomes Rapunzel, and Rapunzel was not originally a princess oh, because yeah. they were following the original fairy tale, and the yes, original fairy sorry. tale Rapunzel's not a princess. But then something weird about like. The actual Rapunzel gets kicked into a squirrel, yep. and <laughs> the actual prince gets kicked into a basset hound, yes, and the that. hare was alive, and there was an evil winged cat, and so it's like, this was a really interesting version of the story that, frankly, I'm glad they didn't go with. Yeah. That sounds um, like something I would have come up with. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, two people being transported into the world of Rapunzel. Got it. Me. Would love to do that. (laughs) But yeah, so the Dark Prince Eugene theory kicks back to the fandom theory and then kicks even farther back to that original version Mm -hmm. of which we do not speak because it was so weird and I'm so glad they didn't do that. But uh, it also would kind of blend with Bastion's backstory because Bastion was, like, kind of a good dude, but he hang, hung out with the wrong crowd. So, like, you know, if Eugene was a prince and then became a thief and was kind of hanging with the wrong crowd, it feels like kind of a combination of all yeah. of his mm-hmm. selves. Yeah. Except for maybe the pirate part, but, you know. <laughs> hey, pirate, thief, same difference. Yeah, close <laughs> enough. Close enough. Oh, uh, okay. So the next one is a theory that I came up with before the series ever came out. And it is regarding Rapunzel's name and birthday, because people are always saying, why did Gothel keep her name? Why didn't Gothel change her birthday? Why, if she'd just done that, Rapunzel never would have known, yada, yada, yada. So here's my two cents on that from before I was told otherwise by the series. <laughs> so first of all, if you look at the little baby, who's a wiggly, giggly baby, at the beginning of the movie, that is not a newborn. That is a three-month-old baby. Mm -hmm, Because no newborn is that wiggly and giggly. That is just, they're just not yet. They don't have that much energy and personality yet. So They just lay there and cry and poop. Yep. (laughs) All newborns do. And stare vaguely at the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So occasionally make smiles when they pass gas. (laughs) Yes. So... My thought was that the lantern lifting was not on her birthday, but on her naming day and or her christening or however you want to look at that. I figured that the king and queen had not yet revealed her name because back in the day, they wanted to make sure a child was going to live before they named the child. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, don't name it. You'll get attached. That kind of nonsense. (laughs) Um, So... I figured that they had given her her name, but it was only like for a day. And that was why the kingdom called her the Lost Princess and not Princess Rapunzel or Princess mm-hmm. anything else. Because mm-hmm. all things considered, the kingdom had never gotten attached to her name. So as for why Gothel didn't tell her her birthday was something different, Gothel has been alive for hundreds of years, literally. And she's a woman who does not like to acknowledge that she ages. I figure that she doesn't make much of a point of remembering her own birthday. And so when Rapunzel started noticing this cycle of the seasons, then Gothel had to like come up with something. And so the only date that was particularly important to her was the date that she got that flower for herself, i.e. the day she kidnapped Rapunzel. Mm -hmm. So she just vaguely told her, oh, yeah, you were born on X, Y, Z day. And then the lanterns were lifting and Rapunzel was staying up later and starting to notice them. And I mean, because little kids, they start recognizing their birthdays before they recognize outside of the world events. So like she probably already had a quote, quote unquote, had her birthday as told to her by Gothel well before she started noticing lanterns like a year or two before. Mm -hmm. So my theory all in all, was that Rapunzel was not originally her name, but the kingdom didn't really know her name, and that's why they called her the Lost Princess. And then that Gothel told her the only date that mattered to her was her birthday. And so that's... And she didn't even associate the lanterns herself, because if you notice, Gothel went to bed early on lantern nights. I mean, 
we only saw the one time, but then it might have been, as far as we know, Gotham might have been like, oh, look, it's time for bed. I'm going to bed, too, so you might as well go to sleep because we're all going to sleep now. That might have mm-hmm. been incentive to keep Rapunzel from sitting up and watching the lanterns. But it also, this is a woman who is, like, very vain, and she will probably get her beauty sleep. And also, she gets bored when she's in the tower. I always love the idea that Gothel cannot stand being in the tower for long periods of time because of the irony. Mm-hmm. So, you know, <laughs> she gets bored, and so she sends everybody to bed, including herself. And so, all in all, I just, that was my idea. And then, before Ever After came out, and Frederick was remembering the past, and he called Rapunzel's name when she was kidnapped, and I'm like, well, there goes that idea. <laughs> At least there goes the naming idea. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like that might have just been kind of like an oversight, mm-hmm. you know? Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Okay, well, that's like the meta reason, but like... You get, like, meta reasons, and then you try to justify it in the yeah. story. It's like, how does yeah. it work out? How does the meta reason work out inside the story? So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, in this version, we don't have the actual reason why Rapunzel's named Rapunzel. Because in in the original yes, fairy tale... What? We do. When you look at the sundrop flower, it looks like a lily. But yeah. if you look at the very, very center, the purple part, with those curly, curly... Um, uh, stamen, that's what the Rapunzel flower looks like. Oh, okay. So it actually, no, I just meant because of the whole like lettuce thing. Well, I know, but my point thing, being yeah, that but, yeah. <laughs> even the that one the inside the journal even specifies she was named after a flower, and so it's like yeah, they are acknowledging the Sundrop flower as a Rapunzel flower. Got it. So, okay. So that's why. Never so, mind then. That, that's okay. It's all good. This is why we have encyclopedia brains over here. Yes. <laughs> okay. We don't want to. Leave any of the remembering to Miss uh, Miss, <laughs> Miss Trauma can't remember anything. There you there. go. There you <laughs> go. Okay, so another theory that I still see popping up every now and again is: Does Rapunzel's brown hair grow? And I've actually heard two different sides. I've heard I mean, and both of these sides I had originally believed came from the higher ups at Disney. Well, not the higher-ups, but, like, the producers and directors and whatnot at Disney. One, no. Two, yes. That's not very helpful. But I have theories behind the e- each answer. So, no, her hair does not grow. I can jive with this. First of all, the meta reason is because they'd have to make even more maquettes for her to have intermediate-length hair. Yep. So I could totally see them being like, no, we are never, ever animating her hair long again. The end. <laughs> But the reason I figured this out would work in story is because if you have a flower, a regular old flower, it doesn't even have to be a magic flower. If you have a flower and you cut off its petal, what happens to the rest of the petal? Eventually it dies. But the whole rest of the flower doesn't die. That's why you can cut some of her hair and have it die and not the rest of it. And the rest I of it see. keeps growing and keeps being long and blonde. Therefore, you cut off her hair, yeah, it's going to die. So that's my, she is literally the sundrop flower. So her hair is literally the petals. So when you cut the petals, they turn brown and they die. The Mm -hmm. end. That's why it works if it doesn't grow again. Now, it growing again also makes sense because once her hair is cut, she's a perfectly normal person. So think about it this way. She is a very curious person and she's got a lot of hobbies and a lot of those hobbies involve scissors. You would think that a very curious child would at some point cut her hair, except that Gothel really instilled into her the you may not cut your hair idea. Well, she already had this lock of hair that was already short and brown. So anytime she got the urge to cut her hair, she'd just trim that lock of hair. And that would keep the rest of it safe while also getting off the urge to cut her hair. So. That's why no, that's why yes. So those are those are my theories going on that. Can't say I've ever thought about it not growing or growing back. I always thought it just yeah. didn't. Yeah, see, because I know that like way back in the day, I remember when I first started out on Tumblr and I was like absorbing as much information as I possibly could. At some point, I just saw, no, her hair does not grow. And I'm like, okay, then it doesn't grow, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just accepted it. And then later on, somebody suggested to me that it does grow and... That was actually Moon Cactus. Um, she's the one who's like, no, I think it grows, and here's why. So that that cutting the one lock of hair theory, that's her theory. That's not me. That's gotcha. Her. I just totally mm-hmm. buy it. Um, 
so yeah so it's like that's one that's been kicked around forever and that's one of those because you know you see the fan art where she's got kind of like a little past shoulder length brown hair so people are some yeah. people's her hair grows some people assume it doesn't grow i think that even if it does grow that she's going to keep it very short for a very long time because of the significance of both mm-hmm. this is eugene's you know love for me but also i had 70 feet of hair for 18 years of my life now we're going to make that 19 years of your life and so it's got to be awfully nice to have very short hair for a very long time after that just, and it's so damn cute just Oh, yeah. yeah. I love her brown hair. Anybody else says, I love her hair. I mean, this year I got a haircut that is the first time in seven years that I did not have Rapunzel's haircut. So, like, getting it's there. just like, yeah. I'm going to. And the funny, thing, the funny thing is that I actually had a day the other day where I was looking in the mirror like, dang it, I wish I could just grow it back. I just, I want to grow it back to like Rapunzel's length. That's what yeah. I want is that short haircut again. So, yeah. I mean, I'll eventually let it grow out again, but I also did just get a haircut and got it reshaped, so I'm just like, gonna. Yeah. I saw this Maybe. thing that was like, I struggle between wanting to have my hair like Rapunzel and wanting to have my hair like Rapunzel. Rapunzel. <laughs> that's full. I'm like, man, that's a big mood. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That's right there. All right, so now we're going to go into theory, more theories about the series that are not those top tier theories that we were just discussing. And so, drum roll, please. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. We are going to talk about Moon Varian. Moon boy. Moon very entangle boy. Yep. <laughs> so this is a theory that was started by Ghost to R on Tumblr and everybody just jumped on it. Oh, they man. loved it the idea of Mary being connected to the moon. And this theory came up well before we knew anything about the Dark Kingdom or yep. anything like that. All we had was like the the sigil on the back of of Kieran's hand, like just finding out that Kieran was the person with the tattoo on the back of his hand. So this all went jumping into craziness about if Rapunzel is the sun, then Varian, who is her opposition, is obviously the moon. And I can see where the um, where that would come into play. Like that seems yeah. like a very obvious thought process. Um, first of all, while I never call it a theory, I always call it an AU, and there's a reason for that. But um, I will say that the imagery is very striking with his glowing streak of hair and his glowing freckles and everything glowing. And that's very, very cool to look at. I love the glowing freckles. Me too. Mm. They're so cute. I mean, and honestly, I like the visuals a lot, but I don't read a lot about it because it's just an AU to me. I don't buy into it and all that kind of fun stuff. And here's my actual meta reasons why I do not buy into Moon Varian, why I do not think that Varian is going to be connected to the moon, at least magically. He won't be connected to the moon at all. It's because when this first came out, there were crew members who started drawing fan art. And the thing is that people don't seem to understand is that the crew members signed non-disclosure agreements and that if this was an actual thing, they would not be able, they would not legally be allowed to react to it publicly at all. So them drawing fan art of it just automatically threw it out the window. Mm-hmm, and yeah. I know that there was uh, one piece of fan art that came out that even Chris looked at. It was drawn by a crew member and Chris looked at it and his comment on it was, cool, what is it? So, <laughs> <laughs> going with dang these, it, Chris. <laughs> going with these little meta reasons, I really don't think Moon Varian is yeah. going to be a thing. So, it's just it's an just, AU. It's not a theory. Sorry, guys. Which That's, is sad. I, I do feel bad for you guys. Like, I mean, you know. I mean, yeah, I've seen a a lot of comments. It's a cool theory. Like, yeah, it's so. I mean, it's a very cool theory. But like, I, you know, I would. I am currently in the like between state with the with this because I'm like, if a crew member draws fan art of Dark Prince Eugene, that means my theory. (laughs) It'll be cool because they'll draw fan art of my theory, but that means it's not real. So like, I yeah, it is really so sad to have a theory that's gained so much attention and I like also feel so well I've loved seen, not yeah i mean i've seen a lot of people who have commented on it you know they'd better make the moon varying thing a real thing and i'm like i really feel bad for the people yeah. who are like riding on moon varying being a thing yeah. so i mean and another reason i, I don't think moon varying, and this is above and beyond those meta reasons that meta bomb i just dropped um above and beyond that um I don't think they would make Varian 
have magical moon powers because of back to my thing where I think that's going to have to be Rapunzel's magic and Varian's alchemy. I think mm-hmm. that giving Varian magic would defeat the purpose, yeah. you know? And I know that a lot of people who were doing the moon Varian thing were also speculating that he was related to Demanitus, so he was going to be able to do magic and alchemy because of all that stuff. But at the same time, I think that takes the story away from Rapunzel, and that makes yeah. it Varian's story. And yeah. while Varian deserves to have a story and deserves to have his story told it's not the, the series is not his story he is a yeah. side character in this story i mean as as beloved as he is he's still only been in five episodes so mm-hmm. i mean he's really he's 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 a side player i won't say a background player because he ab- absolutely has a major role but he that's is not a main character at this point yeah. um so that's my thoughts on moon Varian. i love the art i think it's really cool but it's just I always make happen. an effort to like the art because I love the art. It's all so creative and beautiful. Yeah. And so and the Varian fans make the coolest fan art. I swear. Yeah, yeah. seriously. You guys, like, oh man, the Varian fan art. It's like, there's some seriously cool fan art out there. And you know what? Honestly, I loved that brief period of time where everybody was drawing him impaled by the spikes because of the anger. Yes. But like, oh, I don't yes. really blog any of that on my blog because I try to keep it family friendly and that was getting pretty gory. So I was like, I can't justify reblogging this, but I really do like all of those arts. I yeah. thought they were really right cool. Right now, it's and like the... very vampire-ish. Yes. Cool thing. Well, that was sort of by think... Kate. Kate. Yeah, that was started by Kate. Kate was in a Halloween mood, so she drew Vampire Varian, and so people started drawing Vampire Varian, and now she's drawn more Vampire Varian, so <laughs> that's just cool. going to keep going for a while. I love Vampirian. He's the best. Yeah. Vampirian. He was, I love that name, too. He was yeah. wearing a dress for a while. I never understood yeah. that one. That was, okay, him wearing a dress, I think that, I know this all started on Discord. It's a Discord think, thing. <laughs> but I think that that started with the whole co-ladies in waiting, and they're like, well, if Varian's a lady... Dot, dot, dot. Oh, and so yeah, they just, yeah. We're putting him in dresses and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, It'll pop up and I'm like, what is going on in the Discord? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Looks yeah, like yeah. fun, but I'm not there. <laughs> and there was another theory that's like, I spearheaded this. At least I spearheaded it in part. I think, I don't know if other people came up with it independently of me, but I know that I came up with it independently of anybody else. But like... I threw out there that they're going to throw Varian into Corona Prison, which is notoriously easy to break out of. Mm-hmm. And, notoriously. Uh, notoriously easy to break out <laughs> Ridiculous. of. Ridiculous. Like, like, what the on. heck? Guards, come on. Um, <laughs> There's a reason they need Eugene to teach them how to be less stupid. <laughs> Even though, like, Eugene was responsible for one of the breakouts, but... Yeah, exactly. That's... He showed them how easy it was. So yeah. now he's got to be like, okay, you guys really need to step up your game. So um, so with Varian in jail, there was Lady Kane, there's the Stabbington brothers, there's Andrew. I was predicting this great big villain breakout and this villain group that was going to oh. be running around wreaking havoc. And I was like, I loved that idea. And the farther along we get, the less I think it's going to happen. But I really liked that idea. And it's still so fun. And I still see people throw up the AU ideas, um, having Varian team up with pr- predominantly Lady Kane, mm-hmm. is, is the one I've seen. But man, I would love to see Andrew and the Stabbingtons again also. I just like, had a thought. Yes. So we all know, and this, it doesn't have, they don't have to make it canon. It could just be a throwaway thing. But we all know in Tangled Ever After that the Stabbingtons are crying at Eugene and Rapunzel's wedding. Mm-hmm. And maybe that was just for giggles. <laughs> but what if, just just random theory that popped into my head. What if, so if Varian, it, you know, they want to help Varian. So what if they're putting Varian in like, therapy and he's, Converting all the other villains. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> good people. Oh my so god. Yes. I love Stabbingtons and Andrew and Lady Kane all become reformed through therapy. And they oh just, like, god, Rapunzel returns to Corona and she's like, oh my god, so much happened. Is How's Varian doing? And, like, he's just, like, out, about, therapy out session. About with everybody else. And they're just, like, helping people. And she's like, wait, what is going on? <laughs> Max, go catch the criminals. And Max is like, okay. And somebody's like, no, wait. They're reformed now. It's all good. Yes. 
<laughs> it's I just solved it. like that. It's like, like, oh. I love it. That's so yeah. great. And I we're love it. Jean and everyone else is like, what the heck? <laughs> what happened? We've been through complete and utter nonsense. What was going on here? Were you all just chilling? Like, what? <laughs> They're all doing community service. That's great. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. That is fantastic. I'm like, sold. I'll take it. I like that. Right. I like that theory. I just like therapy. So, you know. Therapy is good be, for people. Yeah. It really is. Okay. So, the next one is one that has been thrown around since the very beginning of the series. People have been every now and then popping up with, I bet Cassandra is Gothel's daughter. No. And their primary reason for thinking this is that is just look at them. They look exactly alike. Well, you know, in series animation, they don't really look anything alike. Like, they have similar coloration, but I do believe that the point of that was they gave Cassandra this villain color palette in order to make her not a villain and just show that, like, people cannot be defined by how they look. You they know, wanted that kind to of throw us off variance tracks they totally want to throw us off variance tracks she was a red herring the whole time even though <laughs> oh my god wait i don't someone's probably brought this up and i'm just remembering it but when we first meet varian he's got green and is bathed in like the purple yeah. fog yeah. He's, he's got, got the, the whole disney, disney villain, villain colors. Colors. yep i yeah i have like seen that thrown up it's just yeah, like okay. absolutely absolutely yeah so on cassandra being Gothel's daughter which I don't buy this theory at all, at all, at all. And my biggest thing behind it is that there is no way that Gothel would have done that to herself. First of all, she is so vain that she would not have wanted to stretch out her body that way. Mm -hmm. Second of all, she is canonically extremely old and her body is aging rapidly on a regular basis. I do not think she has a viable womb in which to carry a child. Goodness, no. um, and it's like, why would she bother to keep herself young enough to carry a child all the way to birth and then just give the kid up? That doesn't right. make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. So it's like... Also, a lot of people like the idea just for the shock value of Cassandra's Gothel's daughter and how would Re Rapunzel react to that. I'm like, at this point, Rapunzel would be like, well, you're obviously not Gothel, so it doesn't make a difference. Also, how would how would they ever find out? You yeah. know? So it's like, there's just so many not reasons like... why this would work. And it's just, nope, sorry. I'm like, no, I'm 100% yeah. against this theory. Plus, we already got confirmation that it's not true at the panel. Yeah, at D23 uh -huh. Expo in 2017, somebody came up and actually asked the question to Chris. And Becky and I both rolled our eyes. We were like, oh, God, this again. <laughs> we did, because we had already been battling this, this theory for months yeah. at this point. Yeah. But Chris's response, like, it was a longer than this, but the line that really struck with me is, none of you know where Cassandra has come from. Uh -huh. And so... That actually said two things to me. First of all, that said that every theory we had come up with at, until that point was wrong. Because Chris was already reading my blog at that point. I mean, he, uh -huh. he liked and commented on things on a regular basis. I knew he was seeing all these theories coming out. Kate was already following me at this point. So it's like I had a bunch of the crew were already seeing everything that the fans were saying. Um, but tying into that... That's another reason why I don't think that Cassandra and Eugene are siblings is because that theory had already been thrown out there by the time he said that. Yeah. So since that, that doesn't mean she can't be dark princess though. No, it does uh -huh. not mean that she can't yeah. be dark princess, but it's just, yeah. So all things considered like, no, I don't think Cassandra is related to any of the main cast. Um, not the ones that we've met so far, like met, met. I'm not saying yeah. like, we, we haven't really met Edmund. Let's be real. Um, we all viewed him briefly, but yeah. we haven't had We were like, who dat? Yeah. Like, we were yeah. with Cassandra, Cassandra in the beginning. Who dat? Yeah, that's like, that's another thing, is that he's got this name, and we have not canonically learned his name yet. Like, in the series, nobody said his name. Oh, so yeah. that's another it reason only... why I'm sure he's not dead, because, yeah. like, we haven't actually met the dude yet. Only reason we know for sure is it's him is because of his voice and then in the credits at least yeah, exactly exactly so yeah so we're, we're not done seeing Edmund 
Yeah. Um, so the next theory that I see pop up every now and then is, is Demanitus alive? And my initial reaction, my first thought was like, there's no way Demanitus is still alive. But I have very recently come around on this because of the simple fact that immortality is a thing that exists in the Tangled universe. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to know how to do it. And even though Demantis did not have the sun drop, that doesn't mean he did not figure out an alchemical way to do it. Because yeah. what are alchemists famous for trying to figure out how to do? The Make Philosopher's the Stone! <laughs> exactly. And so... Sorry. Big full metal alchemist nerd right here. So Yeah, but you, you, you throw that back, you can even throw that back to like Harry Potter, the philosopher. Oh, no, so, uh, absolutely. I absolutely. just <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I but it's so actually, excited. It's a thing that like alchemists are known for trying to come up with. And so let's say Demanitus did come up with the Philosopher's Stone. There's a very he could very easily be immortal. And we know that he's got a voice actor, and that his voice actor is an old man. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm not inclined to think that we're only going to see him in flashbacks. Because yeah. I just, I don't think so. I think we're going to actually meet Demanitus and that he's going to be alive in the current day and age in Tangled Times. And maybe he's going to be so old and like kind of retired, like refuse to help them. Maybe he'll be like, I'll tell you what you have to do, but I'm not doing it for you. And then like, we got to get very to help us with this, you know? So all Scooby-Doo style or something. I don't know. Yep. But yeah, so um, that is my thought process is I absolutely, at this point, I think he's probably alive. Um, I think it was when we got the announcement that we were getting a voice actor for him. I was like, oh, really? Hmm. You know? So, yeah. Not I was, dead? <laughs> yeah, I didn't really <laughs> see a flashback that, like, the one... 25 years ago is the only real one we've seen that wasn't told in like fancy story form. Oh yeah. And so it's like, because those are all active characters, that's why we had that kind of flashback instead of getting some like a deer telling them the story later on. So that's another reason I think that Demanitus is going to still be alive because the only other flashbacks we have forgotten have been some cool story. Yeah. So the next one is, are Cassandra and Lance going to be an item? And I will admit that, I mean, I've said this many, many times, I am not of the opinion that absolutely everybody needs to be hooked up by the end of every show of any variety. Like, mm -hmm. I'd be perfectly happy if Rapunzel and Eugene and Frederick and Ariana were the only canonic couple by the end of the series. Yeah. That being said, recent evidence points to yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, like, I feel the same way that you do, but, like, I also won't be upset if oh, Cassandra and Lance... It's so cute. The, it's <laughs> cute, and also, and also they'd be a an interracial couple, which uh -huh. we cool. still don't always get enough representation for, so... Absolutely, absolutely. So, I'm I mean, not complaining. So, like, yeah, I don't ship it, but I won't be upset if it's true, and I'm sure that the truer it looks, the more I'll ship it, because they are adorable. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 I'm okay with that being the horse that comes in first, like quite honestly. And mm -hmm. honestly, one of the things I love about it is that you look at the way that Lance looks at Adira and he actually has more of a celebrity crush on her. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's no real emotion behind that. He's just got stars in his eyes and he's full of wow. But it's like, that's not love. That's like, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's how we all feel about giant women right right <laughs> right <laughs> i mean and honestly i thought it was so cute when like lance was first like dude was there like an angel here or something because i was like he yeah <laughs> like he's like on the edge of death and he's like there was some woman here <laughs> like, like, seriously pretty yeah so Amazing. like yeah, I, i'm all over that so it's like yeah i don't i ain't not for instant have I thought that Adira and Lance was going anywhere I thought that was I mean I was perfectly happy with that being a one-sided crush for all of eternity and mm -hmm. Lance originally eventually being like yeah no I know this isn't going anywhere I'm just letting it go yeah. but if Cassandra and Lance get together I will not be upset because mm -hmm. it's like no nah, just it, let it happen I mean and honestly I think that Disney will do something right that a lot of people do wrong that if Cassandra and Lance end up in a relationship together that Cass is not going to lose any of her edge for it. She's going mm -hmm. to continue yeah. the tough one. Because for one thing, Lance is like so skittish. It's adorable. So 
Cass will still have to be the tough one amongst them. I mean, she's been shown helping him up and whatnot multiple times. Mm -hmm. We had, you know, in Keeper of the Spire was the first time she admitted they were friends. Then in There's Something About Hookfoot, Lance like six her on the shark guys. Yep. <laughs> and then he six her on the on the Yeah, they six her yeah. more. Get them, they're, they're, all, they're all under the, the influence of the of the idol. Yeah. So um yeah, so it's like and also I mean watching her watch him dance, I have to agree that is the softest she has ever looked at anybody. You mm -hmm. know? So like straight up I can see it happening, even if I don't particularly ship it, I will I will not be opposed to it and I think it's adorable. When oh she God, was it. watching him dance, like I missed it the first couple of times because Eugene looks so good right there. I was oh, like, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. I pulled up Eugene enough in this episode. Uh, I also just had this adorable thought that if they do become a couple and they like lived together or got married or something, she'd be the one to kill spiders. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> he'd get so scared and he'd cower behind her, and she'd be like, "Oh my god, are you serious right now?" Oh my god, it needs to be canon now. So I just. Great. Oh my god. <laughs> so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. You're ready for me to like interrace up this little family? And then they adopt Angry and Red. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> oh, my children. <laughs> because here's the deal. Now that Angry has straight up said that she and Red are a package deal, I'm like, okay, I can't justify tearing them apart. That would be terrible. Mm -hmm. But I also can see Lance taking them and not Eugene and Rapunzel, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, 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 we'll see how this goes. If they choose to be adopted at all, this always comes down to do they even want to be adopted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Fun, cute, adorable interracial family stuff. I, uh, I cut you off earlier, Becky, but you were going to talk about the recent evidence we have for Classy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that. If we're on okay. the same thing. So, okay, going back with the... The, the meta stuff, uh, the reason why I don't think Moon Varian is going to happen because meta like points towards no. Meta points towards yes on this one because Glow Amber has been making those pins and she threw out there, would anybody be interested in a classy pin? And Chris replied, yeah, I want three. One for me, one for Eden, and one for James. And I'm like, why would he be buying them stuff like that if it wasn't canon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I'm like, okay. I messaged like, her. Hands down. Like, I just saw the. Me too. I messaged her. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, my God. She was like, I'm freaking out. <laughs> yes. yes. And I'm absolutely like, congratulations. Out. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so all evidence points to yes at this point. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. We are going to get into actual suggestions now. These were ones that were given to us in the past two weeks after we started requesting suggestions for this specific podcast. So this was brought up to me to talk about Eugene's age, that acknowledging that it's not really a theory, but did we want to mention it? Okay, so here's the deal with Eugene's age, and I will never tire of talking about this. Until it is, I mean, even when it's straight up his age is canon, whatever that age may be, I will not get tired of schooling people on this. Uh -huh. Eugene is not 26. I know that we all bit that lure when it was dangled in the water because it was the only number we had. But back when the movie had not been out very long and we're like, yeah, but how old is Eugene? Someone on the original movie's crew said something about them thinking that he was 26 and it was the only number we had so everybody left on it and just oh my gosh he's eight years older than rapunzel he's 26 and yada yada and i'm fine with that she's 18 they had a long relationship before they get married whatever that is beside the point the point is that he has never had a canon age when nathan and byron have been questioned and nathan byron nathan greno and byron howard the directors of the movie I know, it's him that just spit out Nathan and Byron, and you might not know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When Nathan and Byron were asked, we got an age range of between 22 and 24. So that's not even touching 26. That's yeah. And it's still a three-year age range, you know? So 
we I so mean, far have an age range of sometime between 22 and 26. And that's in the actual movie. So, no, I know that people think that, that it was actually said by the creators of the movie, but it was not. It was not ever said by that. Eugene does not have a canon age. And I know that they're building up to tell us what his age is. And I'm sure that every, that Chris, I know you're listening and I know you're laughing at us right now. <laughs> you're laughing at us for like going over this again. But I know that we're going to be getting that age soon. I really, really, I mean, I, yeah. I'm getting a backstory and I feel it in my soul that when we get his backstory, we are getting his age. Just yeah. Soon, people. We are going to find out soon how old Eugene actually is. And then you're going to have to subtract one from that to be how old he was in the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The end. And when I when I talk, because the person who questioned Nathan was me. It was me. I, you know, I, I've been Facebook friends with him for a while. And it is actual Nathan Greno, if anyone's mm -hmm. yes. wondering. I am. I'm also friends with him, too. Yes. So, yep. um, knowledge of actually Nathan Greno. Yeah. It's actual Nathan Grena. But um, I believe the exact thing he said to me was, we never came up with an exact age for him. I always felt he was 24 or 25. And that's Nathan saying that, not me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he thought that he was 24 or 25. Some people on the crew thought he was younger, but no one ever came up, or but we never came up with an actual age. So... Yeah. There you go. There you go. He's like, but, they never came up with his actual age, and that is just canon. So yeah. whatever the series says is canon. That is not overriding yeah. anything. That is just straight up. And guys, you need to understand that the series crew has done extensive research into the movie before they started making the series. They checked and double-checked their facts. They so may it's have seen like, the movie more than me, which is impressive because I've I know, seen it a lot. Yeah. I mean, and I know that I've heard things such as if ever the crew was starting to, like, kind of waver away from the movie, they'd be told, go watch the movie again. Refresh your yeah. memory on what this movie is actually like. So... I wish my like, job would tell me that. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, okay, go watch Tangled. Time. Okay. <laughs> like, every time the crew posts, okay, we're having a pizza party and watching Tangled, I'm like... Are you kidding me? Dream. I'm not going to be having a pizza party watching Can, Tangled. Can you what invite me to that? Like, <laughs> I like pizza. I like Tangled. <laughs> yeah. I would I'd totally like to be there. I'd get in my 518th viewing. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. So, guys. Eugene's age. Non-existent until we are given the age. So, yep. just remember that. And I will scream it from the rooftops. And when he gets an actual age, I will, like, shoot off fireworks that spell it out in the sky. Yep. Just, yes. I'll, I'll get it tattooed on my body. You oh my God. is blank. There you go. I'll have it right next to my other pink tattoo. I'll just, like, have a number. And people yep. will be like, what's that number? I'll be like, that's how old Eugenio's in the movie. <laughs> Why? Like, Don't worry about what? it. <laughs> Who's Eugene? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. If you don't know who Eugene is in reference to this tattoo, then don't even talk to me. <laughs> all right. Oh, man. Okay. So the next one that was suggested is what did Gothel do all of her time when she wasn't in the tower? And I just straight up have to say, I don't know. Like, the woman clearly did not enjoy being in the tower. She would show up, get herself youthened, and then she'd leave again. But the woman, like, has been living for hundreds of years, so she has to be doing something. But at the same time, it's not like she has much of a social life because somebody who is hiding where they live does not want to make friends in case those friends want to come over. Yeah. So it's just like, I have no freaking clue what that woman was doing with all of her time. You she's, know? Uh, Buying parsnips. <laughs> Making right? hazelnut soup. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is she buying parsnips? No, woman, she stole parsnips. That woman didn't pay for anything she didn't yeah, have to true. pay for. Yeah, that's true. She's going to... Uh, Corona Community College and taking lots of <laughs> courses because what else is she going to do with She has time? so many degrees. Yeah, <laughs> She's like the Cullens <laughs> in Twilight. Right? That's what I was going to say but I didn't want to say it because I was like, to being my filthy Twihard self. She, but I was she's like, got the graduation cap wall. Like that's like the yeah, Cullen kid. Learning things all the time. No. I mean, honestly, that wouldn't surprise me because the woman is so sharp and it is in her best interest to have as much knowledge as possible. Mm -hmm. She's like probably like Sherlock Holmes over there. Like if she was working on the side of good, it would be like for everybody's benefit. But no, she'd much rather just stay young forever and be evil. 
characters who have seven PhDs. Bruce Banner, Mother Gothel. Yep. <laughs> Edward yep. Cullen. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's great. So, yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I've got no idea. It's like, Gothel is really the last of the really over-the-top villains Disney's had in a while, like, after Tangled, they all started being twist villains. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, back in the day, a Disney villain just had to be, like, over-the-top, and yeah, they didn't even have to have much of a backstory. Just like, so this person, this villain wants this thing, and that's all they want. And it's just like, okay, I can live with that. You're a villain. That's how you roll. You know? So... The most, I feel like the most frustrating thing with that is not only are we getting the twist villains, but we're also getting red herring villains. Yeah. So people, you know, they start us out with somebody who you're like, oh, there's the main villain. And then they're like, Haha, no. <laughs> and, uh, like 90% of the time, it's, it is- uh, it's Alan Tudyk. <laughs> right? Alan Tudyk is like the other villain guy. He was the first twist villain of the oh. new age and then he kept being the red herring because yep. then he's the Duke of Wesselton yep. and Alistair Cray. <laughs> it's like, and and um, I, even though he wasn't the twist villain in Zootopia, he was in Zootopia. Oh, yeah, and he's a shady guy, too. He's Duke Weaselton or yeah. something like that. <laughs> Which I was like, are you serious? Like, we have talking? to do this right now? <laughs> but, like, yeah, that's always him. So if he's in the cast, then you know he's not the villain. Yeah. Just straight up how it works. Yep. But, I mean, but to this day, I maintain that I want him and Zachary Levi to do an Edwin off. Because oh, between please. between King Candy and Feldspar, I just want to hear them both talking like that. Right. Like, that would be hysterically funny. And I want to see, and then, like, let's throw some actual clips of Edwin to see who's actually the closest. Like, uh, that would be amazing. I would love to hear that. I'm just, this is my stupid adult fangirl things I want, you know? And then I'll, I'll throw my dad into the ring with them. Because he's, <laughs> he's just a really good Edwin as well. Nice, you know, it's just nice. the mustard line all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next suggestion was thoughts on what's up with Adira. And... <laughs> We don't know. I love that. What's up with Adira? What's up with Adira? Okay, yeah, that's the thing with Adira is like we straight up don't know. We know that like, ha- like they deliberately they did the half of her face covered in makeup to signify that we're not getting the whole truth on her. So the whole point is we don't know what's up with Adira. Um, I have seen speculation that she that she might work for an outside source because. Edmund gave them the command to keep people away from the opal, and she's, like, deliberately leading people to the opal. So it's like, so is she double-crossing him, or does she actually, like, does she follow the Brotherhood more strongly than she follows the king? Uh So even though the king is part of the Brotherhood, is it sort of like, well, what the Brotherhood wants, does does she actually work for Demanitus, you know? Like, is she a disciple of Jean Thierry? So it's like, we really have no... I, I don't think she's going to be another Twisted Villain because they literally already did a Twisted Villain in this series. So I don't think she's going to be a Twisted Villain, but I don't necessarily think that she's going to be on any one side but her own. Like, she's got her own agenda, you know? Yeah. So... And, and as we just said, Disney, please stop with the twist Villains. They're getting a little old. <laughs> I mean, I will say that the nice thing with Varian as a twist villain is that we didn't see it coming because we actually met him before he was a villain, as opposed to yeah. he was a villain all, the lo- all along, and then surprise, he was the villain all along. Yeah, it's, we got no, to was- see his actual transition into yeah. villainy, which I feel like is less of a twist because it's yeah. like the other twist villains already had a villain, villain aside. And they were, you know, they had a, a nefarious plot. Yeah. But Varian <laughs> was a sweet little cinnamon bun. And then bad stuff happened to him. And then it got so burnt he, in the oven. And he was like, I don't want to be a good person anymore. So. And a little pouty voice yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, he is a twist villain, but he's not like the what Disney's 
been doing yes, normally. Exactly. But That's if they could just stop It's like that. when I was watching Big Hero 6, I remember the instant I saw Professor Callahan, I went, he's the villain. I just <laughs> straight up, like, I wasn't even surprised. I'm like, no, he's going to be the villain. It's not going to yeah. be Craig. That's too obvious. He's the villain. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so just, yeah. So, Varian, I really like. Once again, crew, I know we've mentioned it on the podcast before, but once again, crew, you did very incorrectly in the twist villain department. Mm-hmm. Good so, job. And that's another we reason. Why, you. Yeah, that's another reason why I, why I think he's getting his redemption arc because it's like they know, you know, they know that they created this great person who is not so great person right now because he's going through stuff. Yeah. But anybody can go through stuff and recover from it. So it's like he's not too far gone because he's just a kid. And all he has to do, and I keep saying this, but all he has to do is realize and acknowledge that what he did was not right. Yeah. And I am, one of the things I love about this series is that there is no one person who was entirely in the right. I will never say that Varian was completely in the wrong a lot of people were in the wrong. A lot of people did things the incorrect way. Um, Frederick did a lot wrong. A lot. Uh-huh. A lot wrong. Yeah. I think that's something we can all agree on. Yeah. So, so many things. So, so many things. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that was with Varian. And then, and that was thoughts on Adira. Okay. So next topic. And, okay. So our next suggestion is what do we think Cassandra's backstory is? And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, yeah. right we have nothing to go on. Like, we, we, Yeah, well, we also, really don't. We have nothing to go on. And also right now we're at this point in the series where we have so many questions and so much more time to get more questions. Uh-huh. So it's like, yeah, we've got not even the slightest, at least with, with Eugene, we have Lance to corroborate his backstory. So yeah. it's like, now he's, he's, telling the truth about that even though we haven't gotten the full story yet but with cassandra all we've got is she was adopted by the captain and she doesn't want to talk about it that's all we've got the only she doesn't like water she's scared of water she's scared of water and (laughs) the well she can now oh yeah that's uh, true (laughs) the one thing that i will say i think with cassandra is i don't think she was being 100 percent forthright about not being able to remember her past Mm -hmm. like she said she couldn't remember, and then she quickly clammed up about not wanting to talk about it. And I'm not saying that at that point in their relationship, she wouldn't have wanted to talk about it anyway. But I just felt like all of her body language said that she does indeed know, but she yeah. doesn't want to talk about it. So, mm-hmm. like, I think she wasn't a baby when she was adopted, or the captain told her the circumstances, or something. So yeah. Maybe like, something traumatic happened, and that's why she doesn't want to talk about it. That could, mm. I mean, I know that, like, it's been theorized that, like, her parents were some of the unmentionables, or the unforgivables. Um, wait, what was oh, it? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you mean... Undesirable. Like, undesirables, okay. Yes, there we um, go. So, the unmentionable. I'm like Voldemort? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, so it's been theorized that her parents were some of the undesirables that Frederick round up. And so, like, the captain arrested her parents and then, like, found her. And it's like, well, can't have this baby not being taken care of. So he took her in. Mm-hmm. But, like... And he taught her to be a guard. So he took her out of the thieving life and put her into the life of the law. You yes. know. Yes. Be all deep and stuff. Right. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, so with Cassandra, I don't have any particular thoughts on her backstory because we've got literally nothing to go on. Like, I don't think she's the the Dark Princess, the, the Princess of the Dark Kingdom. I just, I don't, you know? It's mm-hmm. like, I feel like, I honestly, I know I've said it before, and I know I say I've said it before a lot, but, like, I repeat myself, and I know that. But um, I know I've said it before that I feel like season two is really about Eugene and Rapunzel and about Eugene's story and then Eugene's story with Rapunzel. And I feel like Cassandra's story will come out in season three. Mm -hmm. So like we might start getting some hints about what's going on with that towards the end maybe of season two. But in the meantime, I just don't feel like we're going to get much of anything. Like, maybe maybe part of the point of having her hook up with Lance is that she'll, like, 
drop her guard and talk about it a little bit with someone, you know? Because, yeah. like, cause th- or Rapunzel's not really asking, and the one time Eugene asked, she shut him, shut him down. So I feel like we're not going to be able to find anything out until she's willing to open up, and maybe putting her in a romantic relationship will be that that push that gets her to open up being like okay well now i've experienced best friendship and now i've experienced sibling type relationship and now i'm experienced romance and so i feel like i'm in a place where i can start being more truthful about who i am so i just another another indicator we have that season three could be more about cassandra is uh we got the mid-season title which is literally cassandra's revenge so i'm like you know, I feel like the mid season's gonna, gonna be, be about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And also seeing as how the mid season of season three is Cassandra's Revenge is another reason why I think that the mid season of season two is going to be about Eugene's past. So also Jeez. because the whole thing with like with like Eugene and Lance have a duet and Eugene has a solo and I'm like the songs, while they are not exclusive to the tentful episodes, we always get them in the tentful episodes. Yeah. So it would not surprise me in the slightest if both of those songs were in the tentpole episode, which was the mid-season, which was Eugene's backstory. So, Where are my songs, Chris? Where I want my I'm songs. Chris. Chris. <laughs> Give so. me my songs. <laughs> Chris. So, I mean, Please. speaking of the mid-season and speculation, um, it would not surprise me in the slightest bit if when we came off the hiatus, we came off the hiatus to the mid-season. Because I mean, if uh, they're going in order, then we're pretty much there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because it's like season one, we know that season one, a lot of the episodes were out of order. And they aired the mid-season as episode 19, but the original order was 12? Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. Something we're like that, on, yeah. So we're now on episode 10 of season two. So if they decide to make the mid-season season 11, and that would make perfect sense. Yeah. So I really do or speculate. Like, Part Even if we got, like, an episode or two and then the mid-season. Yeah. Like, that, that would also Maybe, be... But I'm also, thinking, I'm also thinking that, like, part of the reason why we have this hiatus now is because they're going to break the hiatus with the mid-season. So, gotcha. So that's part of my thought process. I mean, I'm obviously... Yeah. Um, Mercury needs to catch up. Because, yeah. I mean, they gave us two months straight of new episodes. And mm-hmm. that's, like, I'm, I'm not over that, guys. I mean, part of the reason yeah. why I'm not dying during the hiatus is I just keep reminding myself that we got 10 episodes in a row. And yeah. it's like, that's never happened with Tangled before. And so I'm, like, not complaining at all. I'm just and like, y'all what are Mercury are doing fantastic. We love you. Don't rush oh yourselves. Yeah, do seriously. The, do the best you can. I don't Absolutely. care if Disney has deadlines. I'm telling you not to rush. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm, us. I'm a bigger paycheck. authority than them, so you know. Hey, I yeah. have a single share of Disney stock, so I have a say in what you do. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Don't rush yourselves. No, but yeah, so I mean, and honestly, like, I know that Tangle the Series, I know that not every series does things the same way or with the same schedule, but I know that Tangled, it literally takes about a year and a half to produce a single episode from writing it all the way to airing it. Because it's like, I found that out when Pascal's story aired and I was talking to Ricky and he was like, yeah, I remember sitting under the Christmas tree last year writing this episode. And I'm like, that was a year and a half ago, bro. (laughs) You know? (laughs) So it was like... Or no, also, I you wrote an episode that sad on Christmas? Gosh, Ricky. <laughs> right? Jeez, Ricky. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't Christmas the year before. It was Christmas two years ago is what he said. Oh, so, yeah. like, so if it aired last year, then it was like Christmas of 2015 that he was writing that episode under the Christmas tree. And Amazing. so it's like, that's when it really struck me how long it takes to produce these episodes. And part of why they're so quality is because, I mean, the animators do work their butts off. They animate as fast as they can, but they also got to not be making mistakes and all that kind of fun crap. So, like, just straight up, be patient, guys. I know that, like, we're starting to get antsy now that we're, like, a month in to the hiatus. So just breathe. We'll survive it. But hey, guess what? We'll still have Tangled Talk during Uh the hiatus. You will. And if you guys have any thoughts of what we should talk about in the next episode, 
You can tell any of us. Yep. And we love answers. suggestions. We do love suggestions. We actually do have some other suggestions. Um, and we're going to probably start diving into those because it's not like we've got new episodes to work with. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, send in the suggestions. We're still going to be doing this every other week. Um, we might actually start be having slightly longer episodes like this one because we're only doing it every other week for a short bit of time. Um, this is obviously a particularly long episode. Um, thanks for sticking with us if you stuck through it all the way to the end. And we will see you next time, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.